What is up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with another episode of Freelander and in this one we continue our hunts for the red jersey at La Vuelta España in what will be our second Grand Tour win of the season. So just to catch up very briefly, of course, it's Jakob Fuglsang currently in the red jersey. He's only got 77 mountain, but he has been so strong at this race so far. 36 years old, looking for his first win at a Grand Tour, but Emmanuel Bookman is so strong. He's in second place, just ahead of us in third, and it does seem like a three horse race at the moment. We've got some in very important stages in this episode, and you can see that starts on stage 11, quite a steep climb yet again, six kilometers long, ends on 17 and a half percent, so steep, ridiculously steep, you would say. Stage 12, slightly less important in the GC, but plenty of hills again. Same with stage 13, although to be fair, this could be very selective with a big downhill run into the line. And then we get into the serious stuff, stage 14, and we have a massive mountain stage, probably the queen stage of the race so far. Of course, there could be some massive gaps with 5,000 meters of climbing. It doesn't end there though, stage 15 and a short one, just 117k, but again, massive climbing throughout the day and another chance for the GC guys. Something else to look out for in this one, we're of course waiting for some offers from some other teams. We let the offer from Bahrain McLaren run out, so let's see if we get any offers in this episode. So let's just get straight into stage 11 then. It's pretty much flat for 150 kilometers, but we do need to be at the front for that final climb. I'm not gonna lie, this is getting beyond a joke now. Look at this form. Only Vows is our decent teammate in this race. Everyone else on minus threes or worse. Honestly, this is making me want to leave the team. I'm not gonna lie. So we do have another 17 man group up the road, including Marda and Gesper, some pretty dangerous riders there. And you can see I have stuck Garavaglia on the front to try and keep that gap in check because on a plus three day, I definitely think we do have a little chance at the stage win today. 35k to go then, and you can see it's a very fast pace at the moment in the peloton. Uh, you can also see that I've stuck some guys up to 90 to be honest, I just don't know what else to do with them. I don't know what they're useful for. A few guys going out the back already and the breakaway do not have a chance today. So 7k to go right now. You can see we just have three teammates left in this group and we do need to come to the front into the bottom of this climb. Bilbao and Colbrelli can do what the hell they want. We've got Vals to help us on this climb. Let's try and come to the front as the pace does slow somewhat. Let's go 78 right now. You can see Alaphilippe in his World Champs jersey again. Maybe 77, 78, I think maybe even 80. As you can see, guys struggling to stay with us at this pace. If we look at the profile, we do need to save some energy for that crazy final kilometer. But I'm definitely feeling hopeful about this stage right now. Let's just stay on the front as Alaphilippe attacking already. Okay, I'm not going to follow. I'm going to try and go 85 as Garcia Cortina. Garcia Cortina is ninth in the GC, guys, after 10 stages. This guy is unreal, he's an absolute monster, as Vows is almost done right now. So we can stay with Fuglsang, he's got to try and chase Alaphilippe in. I'm going to try and save as much red as possible though for that final kilometre, which is crazy steep. As I've already mentioned, maybe we can just take Fuglsang's wheel to be fair. There's 14 riders in this group at this point, over the top of this climb, and I do think comrades... Garcia Cortina and Alaphilippe are going to be caught right now. We can go 88 maybe with Landa. Alaphilippe I think has gone way too early on this climb. Maybe up to 90 slowly. We've got plenty of red left. I'm trying to conserve it as much as possible. But Jakob Fuglsang is just riding away from us right now. And here we go. We can go up to 95 on this final 500 meters. Maybe sprint very shortly. Can we take any time today? Up to 99. We can sprint now into the final meters and Mikhail Landa. What a show, what a ride. And I think we'll gain some time on Fuglsang and Bookman here. We celebrate across the line. What a ride today. And will we take maybe 10 seconds? I hope this gap counts. It's a small gap, but maybe we've dropped Fuglsang and Bookman there along with the other GC contenders. What a start to the episode then guys. We take nine seconds plus some additional bonus seconds on both Fuglsang and Emmanuel Bookman today. 
Also a 22 second gap to everyone else behind at least. Alaphilippe drops another 36 seconds. He's really gone off the boil, I think, after his stage 10 performance in the mountains. If we look at the new GC, we cut the gap to Jakob Fuglsang to just 14 seconds now, jumping into second place. Thinking ahead right now, we still do have a 38 km individual time trial coming up in this race. So I do think it is important to try and attack our rivals at every opportunity really, especially whilst we still have our fitness peak, uh, because we do need to come into that TT with some time on our rivals. With that in mind then, stage 12, and it is some climbing, um, but not typically a stage, I would say, for the GC guys to be attacking each other. However, we'll see how it goes. If the pace is high enough, we can potentially try something on those final two climbs. Under 50k to go then, and you can see the pace in the peloton very fast, as you would probably expect, with the breakaway still up the road, just nine riders this time around. You can see I've got a bunch of guys on 90 relay trying to get them to the front to try and put our rivals in difficulty. All they're doing is putting themselves in some difficulty though. Anyhow, let's hope the pace is high on this climb because we need it to be if we want a chance of gaining any time today. So we're not even to the top of that climb and everyone in our team is now done. Would you believe it? To be honest, I'm not too surprised. We're just gonna have to sit in for the moment the pace is still pretty high and it has been high for that entire climb to be fair uh, and I think the number of riders in this group is about to drop significantly let's see it's down to 66 over the top of that climb so we're now into the final 20k of this stage it's been Mitchelton and Scott on the front for the most part today I guess Haig must be feeling good they've done a lot of pacing in this race but haven't really had much impact on it so far to be fair obviously Garcia Cortina maybe is the man they are pacing for. Anyhow, let's move up now with Landa as we come into this climb. Let's go up to 87. Maybe I can try a little one as we start the climb right now. And you can see it's Comrades and Garcia Cortina on our wheel. Ala Philippe as well. And that is good. We need some uh, riders up the road with us, I think, because it'd be very difficult to get away by ourselves with 16K still to go. Anyhow, that's out the window as a few guys are now blocked. Let's just pace on 84 now, see how we end up at the top of this climb and see who can stay with us here. So Patrick Conrad has followed us covering for Bookman, I would guess. And you can see a few guys now joining us up the road. Lots of them really struggling though with this tempo. Vlasov, Molima really struggling. Bookman is some way down. Same with Fuglsang. Let's up, up this again to 87. Ala Philippe coming up as well now. Will they relay me at 87? Maybe not. Um, so I'm just going to continue pushing over the top. And to be fair, I don't think we're going to drop any of these guys. So I think we're going to have to sit up now over the top of that climb. 28 riders are all that remain in the peloton at this point. So we're on the downhill section and it looks like Julian Alaphilippe is now trying something on the downhill. Of course, a very capable downhiller and quickly into the final 5k. I've just used my energy gel. I've taken Molima's wheel and you can see Zacharin is struggling to hold that gap. We'll follow Vanderpool maybe into the final 4k. It's a massive attack by Julian Alaphilippe here and we're losing the wheels somewhat right now. Maybe I'll follow Sagan who will want to sprint for the victory right now. I'm going to follow Peter Sagan as a few guys have gone up the roads into the final 2k. Slightly uphill right now there. Let's go up to 92 with Landa and it all comes back together into the final kilometer. We can sprint right now and Peter Sagan is done would you believe. Can we challenge for the stage? I don't think so. And it will, of course, be Ivan Garcia Cortina taking the stage win today. What a rider this man is. So we did try a little one on that final climb, but I think it would have been too difficult to stay away. So we did sit up and let the sprinters or the punchy sprinters really challenge for the stage. I'm surprised Sagan wasn't strong enough. Same with Vanderpool in the end. And Garcia Cortina, the man who is just unreal. Look at these stats wins another stage. But we do stay 14 seconds behind Fuglsang, and like I'm currently mentioning, we do need to take some more time on both Bookman and Fuglsang ahead of that time trial at some point. Definitely another opportunity provided on stage 13. You can see plenty of hills in that final kilometre, and it's pretty suitable for an attack with a downhill run in to the line. And of course, as long as we're feeling good, 
I'm going to try something with Landa. So it's a pretty sizable six minute lead already for 17 riders up the road, the likes of Harada, Valgren and others in this group and potentially they could have gotten away for the stage here. It's absolutely classic isn't it? We just had a fall on the downhill and two guys in the entire peloton foul and it had to be two guys from our team Novak and Vals our main helper for the day has also gone down. Not good at all as we race into this next climb right now. So again I would have loved to have paced up this climb but we just don't have the team for it. Bilbao and Caruso are done. The final two men left from our team in the peloton of under 70 riders right now with plenty more climbs remaining. There we go then, 50k to go and Bilbao and Caruso out the back, Lanza now by himself for the rest of this stage in a group of just 41 riders or 42 in this front peloton that's up the pace slightly just to make sure we stay here over the top of this climb. I think we're going to have to try some attacks on this final section. So we're over one of those two climbs, no moves just yet and I do think we need to make this very difficult for our rivals. Let's go up to 60 on this downhill section. I'm going to try something on this next climb as we do have a full Sosa and Gegenhart are now behind. Let's go straight up to 99 as we come into this climb. Attack now with Mikhail Lander. Who can stay with us on this climb? I do think most guys will be able to, but let's at least try and weaken them. Let's go now down to 95. Slowly down to 90 as we catch the final man in the breakaway. We have been caught. Let's try another little attack away from Izagiri. Now we need to go 84 ahead of that final climb. And you can see we haven't been able to drop them just yet. So I do think we're going to have to sit up right now in this group of now just 18 riders in the peloton with plenty of guys struggling. Oh, that is perfect. 16 riders at this point and we've got plenty of energy before coming into this final climb. So downhill out the back already is Balka Molma, Roman Bardet, Miguel Angel Lopez is already behind and you can see we can now rebuild our yellow and our red to be fair as we now come up to 85 for this final climb of the day um, and yeah, it's 5k I think we've got enough to go at least 85 for the entire climb um, but I do want to attack at some point let's just sit on the front for now maybe try something in a second. So 4k to go Garcia Cortina is setting a pretty high tempo I think we can probably use our energy gel at this point let's come up to 87 zoom in a bit to avoid the uh, avoid any trees. 15 guys in this group, guys going out the back all the time as you can see. I think this is the moment, let's try it. Mikhail Lander on the attack with 3k to go in this climb. Alaphilippe tries to follow, so does Fuglesang. We're failing to make any ground up at this point so let's try and continue over this little kind of kink in the climb. Let's continue on 84 right now uh, and we're just in a group of three. Alaphilippe and Fuglesang are now with us um, and they look pretty good to be fair six guys behind and Bookman is in that group so I do want to try and continue pacing right now they're not going to relay with me to be fair which is a bit of an issue uh, so maybe we can go 99 over the top with Landa and we're not going to be able to drop Fuglesang or Bookman that is a shame because we've still got yellow left it's not ideal at all to be fair I'm going to have to sit up for a bit aren't I oh dear I did want to drop those guys right there um, and it's pretty much downhill to the line so I think we can try something in a second Somehow Garcia Cortina is still in this group. This guy's actually unreal. Oh my word, he could get a top 10 in the GC at this race for sure. Anyhow, we're coming into some hairpins. So let's try and attack with Mikhail Landa on this downhill section. If nothing else, let's try and win the stage at this point. And I think we can do that with an attack. It's a strong attack. We go away almost immediately on this downhill and just 4k to go in the stage. Pretty much downhill to the line. We've got a 15 second lead with Landa. Um, there's this short flat section and then downhill to the line. 20 seconds, 25 seconds. What an attack by Mikhail Landa into the final meters of the race. And we're gonna take another stage win. What an attack that was. And maybe we can go into the red jersey. Let's continue pushing it across the line. A beautiful win. And we get about 16, 17, almost 20 seconds in the ends. And do we get that red jersey? The answer to that question is no. We don't get a time cap on those guys. Uh, which is very frustrating because I think we could all see 
at least a 15 second time gap, closer to 20 seconds. Anyhow, we do get 10 seconds in the bonus, uh, the bonus second. So now just four seconds behind Jakob Fuglesang, we're closing in very slowly on that red jersey. So I've been trying some attacks in the stages so far today, and they have worked, they haven't worked, and we've gained a few seconds here and there. Still not in that red jersey though. Hopefully this is the day we can overtake Fuglesang and claim that red jersey because it definitely suits Mikhail Lander more than Fuglesang, I would suggest. The final climb, 20 kilometers almost, average of 6.5%. Let's get it. A plus four, that is exactly what I want to see on a stage like this. And we need to try and take advantage of this race day condition, I feel. Val's on a plus four as well. Um, and Bilbao, not too bad to be fair. So hopefully we, we at least do have some support today. We're not gonna have the best support, obviously, uh, but at least we'll get some protection into that final climb, I hope. So we're on this first climb of the day, and I am trying to use my teammates to our advantage, whilst I still can at least. Uh, we've put them on 72 on the front, whilst Lander just sits in on maybe 60. May have to up this very slightly. Uh, but you can see we're doing some damage to at least our own team. Hopefully the other teams are feeling this as well. Okay, so we're now on this second climb of the day. We're down to 78 riders in the peloton. Of course, that's coming down all the time though, as we have Damiano Caruso pacing pretty hard on the front. Um, so we are making use of our teammates today. Lander protecting his energy pretty well, I would suggest. Still 4k to go on this climb. I think we're going to lose Caruso. We'll try and keep Bilbao here over the top though. So Vals is going to push it on this final section of climbing right here. Great job by our Spanish teammate. We can now sit up into this downhill section. I think that is fine. Bilbao is still here, so that is perfect. Um, I think we can pace with Vals on 50. Bilbao can perhaps grab some water. And just 42 riders now in this group. Potentially Caruso will come back on. He's only two minutes down. We'll see about that though. And worth noting as well, almost 10 minutes to the breakaway and Mark Soler looking very good at this point to maybe take the stage. So this next climb isn't too long to be fair. And you can see Bilbao is going 80 at the moment. I think I can maybe afford to go 85 with Bilbao. I'm not too worried about losing Bilbao potentially on this climb. As long as we still have vows going into that final climb, I'll be pretty happy, I think. And just 2k to go, let's really try and push this now. So Barde is pacing very hard on the front right now. I'm not quite sure why, because Lopez is done in the GC and we have almost eight minutes up to the guys at the front. Uh, let's see who is at the front actually. You can see it is TJ Van Garderen attacking the rest of the breakaway coming into that final climb, which we are just entering now. Uh, Bilbao is still here, he's done though, so he can just sit up. Let's concentrate on Landa and Vals as our final helper. So coming close to the final 10k of this stage and it's Astana ramping things up on the front and just 26 riders now in this group. Val's almost done. Let's try and keep him here as long as possible. He's pretty much done now though. Let's take position with Emmanuel Bookman into the final 10k and we do need to watch out for Bookman and Fuglesang in particular as we lose our final teammate right now. So there are just 18 riders in this group at the moment. We're some way to the back, so I'm going to try and move up on 84 right now. Fuglesang is here and just 12 now in this group. What a crazy stage this could turn out to be. Bookman still has comrades and that proves just how strong Bora are compared to our squad at this race. Let's come down to 75, try and conserve some energy sitting in this group. And just 10 riders here right now. We're at the back of this group with Jakob Fuglesang. Up to 80 as Kuss is done, Garcia Cortina is done, and Mikael Angel Lopez is done already. Just 6k still to go in the climb, and we have Comrade still here to help Bookman. We've got Gorka Izagiri, 10th in the GC. Jack Haig still here with Fuglesang as well. I'm pretty sure Ala Philippe has gone out the back at this point. So we have Bookman and Fuglesang, our main rivals, coming into the final 5k of this climb. We say goodbye to Patrick Comrades. Let's see how this plays out right now. So 4k to go, we have an attack, 
by Emmanuel Bookman. Let's try and follow Jakob Fuglsang. I think we can use our energy gel at this point. I'm really worried that Haig is going to lose Bookman's wheel any second right now. He's not as strong as Bookman and Fuglsang so far in this race, but he is able to hold it until this moment and we're blocked off by some riders in the breakaway. You know what? I'm going to take position in this group. I don't think we have the strength really to go any faster than this. Let's try and sit with Uman. Fuglsang is going to rely on us, is he? Let's take position. Does Fuglsang have the strength to bring in Bookman? Oh no, this could be a bad moment for Mikhail Landa in this race. We're going to have to lower this right now to maybe 65. Come on, Fuglsang, you've got to pull, mate. It's your red jersey we are currently losing. He tries to attack Mikhail Landa and Bookman looks done. We are now done though, as you can see. Up the rows, is Bookman going to take the stage? I think he's taken it from Marc Solaire. Okay, so I think Bookman's going into the red jersey right now. We're going to rely on Fuglsang into these final meters. Maybe we can steal some time on him into these final few hundred meters. Let's sprint for it right now. But Emmanuel Bookman is going into the red jersey. Soler, heartbreak for Marc Soler. He won't take the stage. And I think we'll finish in the same group as Jakob Fuglsang right here. Maybe losing a couple of seconds. So we just about cling on to Jakob Fuglsang finishing 19 seconds down on Emmanuel Bookman in the end. The German so, so strong in the mountains as we know. And again, it's just these three guys at the front. Soler, of course, from the breakaway. Everyone else so far down in the GC battle. Haig was next there, almost two and a half minutes down. And so Jakob Fuglsang actually somehow is still in the red jersey, just a single second ahead of Bookman and eight seconds ahead of Mikhail Landa. This is so, so close. It's a three-way battle, but nothing can split these guys at the moment. Behind us though, Haig looking strong in fourth place to get a very nice result for him. Conrad so strong in fifth. And you have to question, would Bookman be so strong without Conrad performing so well at this race. Alaphilippe 6th, Garcia Cortina in 7th. How is this man doing this? Gorka Izgiri is 8th, Vlasov 9th, and Higita currently in 10th. So we move on to the final stage of this episode, and it's another massive day in the GC. Just 117 kilometers, but that final climb could be crucial, of course, we're gonna have to watch out for Bookman because he looks so strong at the moment. And same goes for Fuglsang to be fair. Okay, so it's only a plus two day for Lander today. And if we're only just able to stay with Fuglsang and Bookman on a plus four day, we could be in some slight trouble today. Hopefully we can turn things around and gain some time on them. Just eight seconds separate us between that red jersey, but also two riders as well. So as the peloton come downhill after the first climb of the day, you can see 33 riders up the road in today's break, including the likes of Richard Carapaz, Sosa, Bardet, definitely the strongest break of the race so far. So we're now coming into the final 25k of the stage. Not too much to mention so far to be fair, I've just been focusing so hard on trying to save as much energy as possible trying to not go above 60 when we can, but you can see the pace now really being up and we're way too far back in this group as we start the final ascent of the day. So 13K to go, it's been Mitchelton Scott again pacing on the front, just Vows and Bilbao left to protect us. They're not looking too good though, to be fair. 66 riders in this peloton and just about three minutes to the breakaway, I think. They may take the stage with like Carapaz and Sosa in that group. They'll probably be too strong. We'll see though. 12k to go now. Let's come to the front of this group. So 9.5k to go. Zeitz is on the front. I've tried to recuperate somewhat on that flatter section. It's pretty much uphill to the line right now. Actually, there is one more slight flat section as you can see. As we now have attacks, Fuglsang is involved and we're getting blocked off by Pradas, that is not ideal at all. And we don't really have Bilbao any longer to protect us. You can see Bookman is in this group with teammates. I'm going to rely on Bora Hansgrohe. I think we have to right now. And Bookman is doing the pulling instead of Comrades. 
Can't quite make sense of that, I will be honest. We will sit here though, try and make the most of this. Quite a few riders up the road, the likes of Lopez, Molima, and of course the red jersey in Jakob Fuglsang. I think we're okay at the moment. Losing some ground on 88 to these guys as Bookman doing the pulling and he does bring that group in. Fuglsang just ahead slightly at this point. We can now take position as it all comes back together into the final four kilometers. We still got quite a lot of energy to be fair. So let's try and move up in this group. Use our energy gel as well at this point. Maybe we can just take position with 3k to go. I don't think it's going to be steep enough for us to really take any time on these guys. We will see though, as Vlasov seems to be done, we can come to the front of this group next to Balkan Molima, Fuglsang and Bookman just behind us at this point. Into the final two kilometers, let's up this to 88. Maybe try something, I just don't think it's steep enough for Lander to attack these guys. Up the road, Sebastian Reichenbach takes the stage. We now come into the final kilometre. Let's make sure we sprint and at least don't lose any time to these guys right now. But Emmanuel Bookman has cracked and so has Garcia Cortina. We finish with Fuglsang. And are we going to get any time right now on, uh, on Emmanuel Bookman? That could be huge. I really hope that time gap counts. So Reichenbach with a wonderful solo victory. 40 seconds clear of the rest of the breakaway. And you can see... Lander and Fuglsang do take 11 seconds on Emmanuel Bookman and that could be pretty crucial to be fair. Bookman looks so strong one day and then the next day he always seems to suffer. It happens after he won a stage in the first week of the race so maybe we can play to that weakness in the final week of the race. So as we head into the final six stages of the race it really couldn't be much tighter between Fuglsang, Emmanuel Bookman and Mikhail Lander. It's so, so close between these guys. We, of course, jump Bookman after taking a few seconds in that stage, but it really is anyone's game at this point. And I can't quite believe how strong these three guys are compared to everyone else. The likes of Alaphilippe have really dropped off, but the guys like uh, Miguel Angel Lopez, Soler maybe, even Richard Carapaz, I mean, he should be leading Ineos at this race. I don't know why he's half an hour down, he's just not with it, it seems, at this welter. Anyhow, looking briefly at the other comps, we do lead the points classification ahead of Fuglsang, and we are second just behind Delaparte in the KOM competition. Of course, they are secondary to the GC, we don't really care about these. In the youth jersey, it's Vlasov just ahead of Higita, and it is Astana in the team classification. So still no contract offers to this point, which is quite surprising to me to be fair. I expected we'd have at least a few at this point. So maybe we have no option but to stay at Bahrain McLaren. But you can see, Fuglsang has Izagiri and Vlasov in the top 10. And of course, Bookman has Comrade in the top five. These guys have such strong teams at this race and we are just clinging on by ourselves. The next best rider in our team in the GC is outside the top 50 and it's Vows in 65th position. And so guys, that rounds out this episode of Freelander. We have one more to go where we will, of course, round out this Vuelta Espana and I have no idea what's going to happen. Fuglsang and Bookman are so strong and we seem on such a similar level. So we'll see which way it goes. Anyhow, drop a like if you enjoyed this episode, subscribe to my channel if you are new, let me know what you thought in the comments as well, and I'll catch you guys for the finale.